This video will contain spoilers from the off, so remember, you've been warned. Episode 3 of Hijack has just been released, and it's safe to say that it was a tense one. Following on from last week's premiere, where we saw Flight KA-29 being taken over by five individuals, this episode followed directly on from it, where there was still five hours left of the flight, concluding when there was about four. With the episode finishing on a cliffhanger, with us wondering if Sam Nelson was actually harmed, let's recap, break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this episode. So let's get into it. Here is Hijack Episode 3, Ending Explained. The Ending This episode was very much focused around finding out if the weapons that the individuals that took over the plane were using were fake. We saw Sam working with the gentleman behind him who had experience with understanding weapons and he got him to draw a diagram of what a fake bullet would look like, and also what a real bullet would look like too. This was then passed down to the girls that found it back in episode 1, and they confirmed that the weapons were most likely fake due to the fact that the bullet that they stumbled across resembled a blank. This then meant that a larger plan that Sam wanted to execute could take place. Knowing that the bullets were blank, he stormed the older guy at the back who was looking after the most passengers whilst there was a distraction going on due to somebody wanting to find their uncle's medicine as his condition was slowly getting worse and he was deteriorating. With the confirmed criminal on the plane being an individual who helped Sam, John T. Collins, when he went after the older guy, Sam ultimately said that he knew that the bullets were blanks and was taunting him to use the weapon. As this was going on, the leader of the group, Stuart, was replacing his blanks with real bullets in the cockpit due to the scenes that were being caused on the plane. With the final thing that we heard being a weapon being fired as we saw Flight KA-29 flying 30,000 feet up in the sky, it painted a haunting reality of the chaos that was going on inside of the small plane, which looked so tranquil and was amongst such beauty as it was flying. It tied back into what Marsha Nelson said earlier on in the episode when she was giving her lecture when she was talking about Schrodinger's cat. The idea that everything could be fine, or maybe it wouldn't be, but at that point you just didn't know. So we were very much feeling what the people down below were feeling about the initial confusion on whether or not the plane had been taken over. But this time, for us, it was about what happened to Sam at the end. The weapon being fired also tied back into what was said earlier on, where it was revealed that blanks made a banging sound but they didn't cause any harm. So even though the leader was walking up the aisle, it doesn't necessarily mean that he fired the weapon with live rounds in it, as the blanks would have resembled the same sound. I feel if something like that went off in the plane, then the flight trajectory and condition could have been affected, but with it looking like it was flying smoothly, nothing seemed to be altered, so it does make me wonder if it was the blanks that were fired. However, with the leader Stuart now having real bullets in his weapon, that will prove to be an issue for the passengers, and the feeling that they had when they realized that there was some hope in being able to rely on their numbers because the threat wasn't there, it's all now going to be gone. So I imagine it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to try anything like that now. Plus, there was constant talk of somebody being made an example of, so maybe that might happen too. One thing that was interesting in this episode was that when Stuart switched the Wi-Fi on, it sounded as though he reached out to his boss, but there was no answer, which paints a picture that they could well be left in the dark on what's going on, and the taking over the plane could all be for nothing. We don't have any idea why they took over the plane, and what their actual motive is, but I imagine that's something that we're going to find out more of as the episodes go on. All we know is that the five people that were involved have passports, but they weren't listed down as being on the national database. So even though they had passports and were legitimate, they almost didn't exist outside of the plane, which is extremely interesting and provides a lot more questions as we embark onto the halfway point of the season. I believe that's something that we'll most likely hear more of as the weeks go on. With Alice being the only person on the ground who seemed like she was doing her job properly, with her raising the concern at the dodgy feeling that she had at the end of episode 2, we saw her spotting other nuances that were present that could lean into the fact that there were some issues going on. The fact that the pilot was zigzagging on its flight path. This was a way of essentially showing the people on the ground that something was wrong without verbally communicating it to them and putting themselves and others in danger. So now, the people on the ground in the UK know that something is going on, which will be interesting when the flight enters UK airspace and the communications can truly begin, as the hijackers know nothing of it. I did find the part during the ending where the daughter got out of her seat and was crawling along the floor a little bit ridiculous, 
I just didn't quite understand how neither of the parents saw that she was there and that she'd escaped. She was literally centimeters from them. And also, we all know how small the legroom is on a plane. There's no way that she's crawling out underneath her parents' legs. So I thought that was something that was just a bit ridiculous and was put in as a way of upping the tension. But other than that, I thought everything was relatively okay with this episode. Overall review. I thought this episode was pretty good. It didn't have as much action in it as the first two, but I don't think that was an issue, as this was one that was very much focused around the discovery of the plane actually being in danger from ground control, and also the police and the authorities. Plus, it was also about seeing Sam earn the trust more and more of the people that had taken over the plane. The tension in this episode was really good, and I feel as though that's the most important thing to convey in this type of show. The unpredictable nature of the people that are in this situation, and the flight or fight mindset that a lot of different people exhibit. We got glimpses of a couple of the hijackers being out of their depth when being asked to do things. And we also saw some kind of empathetic side from Stuart when he allowed everybody to have some water. I'm really interested to find out why they're doing this, because I don't know what their endgame is here. They all believe that nobody on the ground knows that something's wrong, which is most likely going to open them up for even more errors. So when they find out, it will be interesting to see their response. Idris Elba as Sam Nelson has been doing a great job. It's just weird because when he's in the fight scenes and he's being beaten to the ground, I feel like I'm used to seeing him dominate in those situations due to the previous roles that he's had, so it does make a change. But I would say that I'm really enjoying Neil Maskell as Stuart. I was really excited when I saw that he was in the show, because I think he's a phenomenally underrated actor, and he's not disappointed at all, which is great to see. We didn't get any more of the story in Dubai this week when it came to the murders that took place, which I thought was a strange choice, especially considering that there's something larger at play going on, but we just don't know what. So I'm hoping we'll actually see what's happening there within next week's episode. With the synopsis for episode 4 looking quite interesting, with it being called Not Responding, and it being about Sam trying to contact the ground once more along with the hijacker being injured, it looks as though it could be an exciting one that's filled with even more drama. But for now, I guess we'll just have to wait until next week. So, there you have it. Hijack episode 3, ending explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.